In this problem, we're told if a fleet can jump straight up to a height of 0 0.540 meters, what is its initial speed as it leaves the ground? And B, how long is it in the air? So I drew this fleet right here. And so we're told it's going to be jumping up, straight up, to a height of 0.54 uh, meters. So the distance it's going to travel here, we know is 0.54 meters. So it's going to be traveling up. And then, so this is what we know. Let's go ahead and write down what we're given. That's how you should always start these problems. So what are we given? So we know the change in y, right? So the height it's going to travel is uh, going to be 0.54 meters. And the way we write that is by writing delta y, right? So we know delta y is going to be equal to 0.54 meters. So delta y is just the change in y, because uh, you guys have been doing like in the x direction. Now we're doing in the y direction. So the change in y, the change in its height is going to be 0.54 meters. So you always want to start these out just by writing all the variables you're given. If you look here on the right, uh, we have these right here. These are the kinematic equations. It says delta x, just imagine delta y. It doesn't make any difference. So you always want to start these off by writing what you're given. So the five variables are delta y, we already wrote that, v, v sub 0, a, and t. So these are the variables. And so I like to write down whether or not we're given uh, them or not. So we already wrote down delta y, which we're given. What about v? So v is going to be the final velocity. So keep in mind, uh, this is just something you have to know about physics. The way it works is if you travel straight up, and we know it's going to be traveling to a maximum height of this. So if they ever tell you something travels straight up to a height of something, you know the final velocity is going to be zero. And the reason that is, is when you go up, your maximum height, your velocity will always be zero. Because at this point, you're at your maximum height, your velocity is zero. So we set v, the final velocity, to be equal to zero meters per second. V sub zero, do we know? Well, they ask us the initial speed, and that's what a, a initial velocity is. So if they're asking us for it, obviously we don't know it, so it's going to be a question mark. And then A, your acceleration. So whenever you're doing a free fall problem or some vertical problem like this where something's jumping up, your acceleration is always going to be equal to 9.8 or minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's the force of gravity acting on the object, right? So that's the force of gravity. That's what acceleration is going to be, so you just have to keep that in mind. Uh, when you're doing problems like this and then t uh, we also don't know because keep in mind they're asking how long is it in the air which is time they're asking about time so i just write t equals question mark because we don't know so those are the variables that we're given uh what we want to do is start with a so a says um we're trying to find the initial speed so we're trying to find v sub zero so these are the kinematic equations on the right and we're going to be using these in order to solve so what you want to do is pick an equation with v sub zero and the variables we're given so we can actually solve so if you look at these equations, every single one of them, except for the fourth one, contain t, right? And we don't have t, so we can't solve for v sub 0. So 1, 2, and 3, we can't use because they have t. But if you look at this one right here, 4, we have all the variables. We have v, uh, we're solving for v sub 0, we have a, and we have uh, delta x right here. So what we want to do is just use this equation to solve. So let's just start plugging in. v, we know is 0, so 0 squared is just 0 equals v sub 0 squared, which is our variable, plus 2 times a, and so we know a is minus 9.8, the force of gravity, times delta x. In this case, we're using delta y because it's vertical, right? Because y-axis is vertical, x is horizontal. So 0.54 for that. And so what we can do is move this to the other side, minus v sub 0 squared. It's going to be equal to 2 times minus 9.8 times 0.54. So if you notice here, this is going to become a negative number because two, or this negative number, there's only one of them. So it's going to be negative on this side, which would cancel with this side. So essentially our negatives will go away. And then we can just square root both sides. So V sub zero is going to be equal to the square root of this side, two times 9.8 times 0.54. So if you go ahead and do this V sub zero, so you have the square root of two times 9.8 times 0.54, you're going to get 3.2 five, three, three, and so on. Uh, you can round however you want. I'm going to go ahead and round to the tenths place. So this is actually going to round up. So 3.3 meters per second, right? Because that's our units. Velocity is measured in meters per second. So answer to A is going to be 3.3 meters per second, or however you want to round. It's up to you. Let's move on to B. So B is going to be how long is it in the air? So I'm actually going to write this up here, uh, but I'm going to do a more exact version instead of the estimation that I did. So 3.253, I'll just call it. So that's going to be the initial velocity. Now we want to do a solve for t. 
So we can pick any equation here except for the last one here uh, because it doesn't contain the variable t, right? Because we can't solve for it if it doesn't exist in the equation. So uh, these are still crossed out. Just ignore that though. And so you can pick any equation. I'm going to go with the top one just because I think it's the easiest. So it's going to be v equals v sub 0 plus a times t. And we just got to plug it in and solve for t, just like the last one. So v, we know, is 0, which equals the initial velocity, which we just found. So 3.253 plus a, the acceleration, which is minus 9.8, plus a negative, right? It's just going to be negative. So minus 9.8t. Solving for t, we can move this to the other side. So minus 3.253. So minus 3.253 equals minus 9.8t. And if we want t by itself, divide both sides by minus 9.8. So if you go ahead and do this, minus 3.253 divided by minus 9.8, it's going to become positive, right? Because the negatives cancel. And you'll get t equals 0.3319. So you can round this however you want. Again, I'm just going to round to the hundredths place. So 0.33 seconds right because keep in mind we're using meters per seconds here so the time unit we're using is seconds so 0.33 seconds so this right here is going to be the answer to b and so yeah that's how you solve this problem and hopefully you found this video useful